you started getting some weapons and some protection. As a matter of fact, uh, your first five selections were on the offensive side of the ball. What was your philosophy behind all of that, Coach? Yeah, you know, we just went through the roster and holes that needed to be filled, and it happened to be a lot of those holes on the offensive side of the ball, and and that had always been our target. Like, we want to go after guys that are going to help this team going forward. Our philosophy was, look, we'll get the best player that fills that need uh, and then try to develop these guys and see what we get. See what we get. You know, it's so funny, you know, when people talk about, you know, great draft, great draft, but when it's all said and done, you got to see what these guys do on the field, and their development is definitely very important. And then obviously it's, it is, it is you know, best guess, but it's also uh, how you relate to these kids and, and vice versa. What would you like about Jalen Polk from Washington and what, you, what he can bring day one, do you think? Yeah, first and foremost with him, he's a dirty work player. He doesn't he doesn't shy away from blocking safeties and blocking even linebackers. And that's what really got me uh, hooked on Polk. This guy, he'll do all the dirty work, and at the same time, he's a tremendous receiver. So uh, we want that attitude in the room and on this team. And uh, the kid from uh, Central Florida, Javon Baker, do you think he can be a day one contributor as well? Absolutely. You know, and once again, there's a lot of competition in that wide receiver room. And he's one of those guys who has a tremendous ability to really run after the catch. And if you watch him on film, he's one of those guys that he won't run out of bounds. He's looking for contact, looking to get those extra yards. And and that's valuable in this game. When you mentioned AVP before, that's Alex Van Pelt. Uh, that's who you're referring to. Your, your new, uh, he's the play caller, right? Offensive coordinator. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. I've, I've never been able to ask that question of a coach of New England Patriots and get an answer. <laughs> so, hey, you know, for a long time, we were title list. <laughs> I do believe in titles. And look, he's our offensive coordinator, has a tremendous history uh, in this league and can develop quarterbacks. We also have, you know, McAdoo as well, you know, handling some of those assistant head coach type of roles, as well as really being hands on with the uh, with the offense. I'm very excited. Don't forget about our quarterback coach, T.C. McCartney. So we have guys here that will help uh, Drake and the other quarterbacks continue to develop. And even a guy like Jacoby, he's not just satisfied where he is right now. He realizes that he has to get better as well. And uh, he's a very self-aware guy. And I think we have the coaching staff to be able to handle handle it. And, and you know, that's just also my way of getting around to the question that I'm sure you've already been asked a million times and you're going to be until there's a game played. And then maybe even after that is how are things different? How are things going to look differently in an organization that has been one way, one guy and one system for such a long time? Offensively, how is this going to look different, can you say? Yeah, I think... I think first and foremost, just having, you know, we brought in 17 new coaches. And so they all, uh, they bring their, you know, the special dynamic or the value to the offensive side of the ball. What I will say is, look, we are, we will be able to run the ball. I think we have tremendous running backs. The guys up front uh, with Scotty Peters will continue to develop. And then really on the outside, we have receivers that can do, uh, that can do different things. So whether it's pushing the ball down the field or those run after catch type of plays, uh, I believe AVP and the rest of the staff have a good plan going forward. Def and saying that, and yes. saying that, this, as we've always been a game plan team uh, defensively, this is a game plan offense. And whether that's a, a personnel matchup or a scheme, we have to be flexible enough to to go back and forth and do what's best for our team. Because that was that was my next question for you, Gerard Mayo. Is is how are things going to be somewhat similar? Because clearly, you know, you've been around the modern day Lombardi as Belichick has been referred to. And I think appropriately, what, what did you pick up from him? What do you think your, your, your head coaching instincts are going to be somewhat similar from him? Yeah. Look, I have tremendous respect for Bill and everything he's done for this organization. Uh, you know, one thing I did learn and I talk about it all the time is that players win games and coaches lose games. That's one, that's one thing that, uh, that coach used to always say that I, I truly believe. And so as a coach, you know, I'm trying to get this philosophy to the rest of the coaches where, all right, once they cross the white lines, they need to have a complete understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. And this goes back to the game plan element, right? So, and, and the complimentary football, we also brought in Jeremy Springer as our special teams coordinator. So just having those conversations and, you know, even for myself, like I've always been here uh, in New England, it's been, it's been very refreshing to hear what goes on in other ball clubs uh, around the league. What do you mean? Here, refreshing to hear that. What are you? What are you referring to there? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's a combination of you know scheme uh, schemes, also a combination of how the days are structured. 
you know, even with Springer, like, you know, under McVeigh, those days were structured a lot differently than what we've done here traditionally. Same thing with McAdoo and AVP and all these coaches. You know, how I, I'm I'm still learning. Look, I'm not uh, ignorant to the fact that I'm green. I'm green at this point. I haven't coached a game uh, a head, as a head coach in the NFL, so I'm trying to pick up little bits and pieces, not only from the people inside of this building, but also outside the building. And look, have tremendous, uh, tremendous support from ownership, you know, they're not football coaches, but these guys have, you know, they, they run a huge business and they know about leading people. So just having those sounding boards uh, will definitely help me in my development going forward. Well, wow. I mean, their support for you has been unquestioned since, I mean, that was the conversation for, for a long time is that you were the coach and waiting coach. I mean, I didn't even bring that up to you when I was chit chatting with you prior <laughs> to the game, when I, you know, was chit chatting with you in Germany. Um, that was the, that was the conversation, and then there wasn't a coaching search. It was like this is the guy. End of story. You know, so which, which I which I appreciate, and and honestly, you know, I think the league should take a look at you know succession planning and how that kind of uh, how that kind of impacts you know the Rooney Rule and things like that. So it's definitely um, you know. I, I appreciate the process. I appreciate it. You know, the commissioner and, and everyone that was involved in this process. And once again, I learned a lot from Bill and, and, you know, even his sons, you know, those guys are, are tremendous, tremendous coaches as well. I'm just looking forward to the future. And, you know, it's the day after day after day grind that we have to, to make fun. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.